if you are a person who keenly follows the political proceedings in Kenya, then there's high likelihood that you have come across Ahmed Nasir Abdullahi, who is also referred to as Grand Mullah. Grand Mullah has been very, very key in the William Samuel Ruto's administration, and even some people actually regard him as an advisor of Dr. William Samuel Ruto. Because uh, apart from just supporting Dr. William Samuel Ruto, it appears that most of the posts that he makes on Twitter actually comes into actualization. For example, Ahmed Nasir, if you will go and look through his tweets, eh, you will find that he's the person who advised Dr. William Samuel Ruto to form what is referred to as the broad-based government. He is still the same person who advised Ruto to impeach Rigadi Gashagwa. And today, the same same Ahmed Nasir has made another tweet that is actually foreseeing what is likely to be the, the decision or the verdict that the High Court will make tomorrow in regard to lifting of the conservatory order that had been put on uh, 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 swearing in of uh, Kitura Kidiki. Remember, what is preventing Kitura Kidiki from being sworn in is the fact that Rigadi Gashagwa lawyers went to the court to stop it. And uh, until the current proceedings in the court are heard, he, he cannot be sworn in. But it's like that conservative order will be lifted. And I understand that it is actually not advisable to speak about matters that are still in the court, which is actually referred to as subjudice. But I am only but making a commentary of what Ahmed Nasir has made on his Twitter handle. And I'm not really uh, the one who has done it. I'm just uh, here to comment eh, and to try and also put in my perspective. And let us go direct to the tweet of for Ahmed Nasir. Uh, it is, reads, it is extremely rare and very unusual for a court to spend enormous time and resources on the discharge of a conservatory order or injunction that was issued ex parte pending the hearing of the application of the hearing of the application inter parties, which is meaning that it is not very common for a court actually to spend a lot of time and resources on hearing a conservatory order case and forego or ignore all other court cases just to focus on this one. And let's continue. It is actually unheard of. Normally, the court will hear the application inter parties and then grant the conservative order, injunction, or discharge it pending the hearing determination of the suit slash petition. He goes further and states that in the normal circumstances, what the court usually does is it doesn't focus on the conservatory order, okay? What the court does, it focuses on the issues that are in hand so that once the issues that are in hand are solved, then it will go to consider either discharging or not discharging the conservative order. For the case of Trigadi Gashagwa, the court should actually be focusing on the content of the case eh, of Trigadi Gashagwa, whether he was impeached well or not, and the other petitions that his team has been raising. But it should not be focused on either discharging or not discharging the conservative order because the discharging or not discharging of the conservative order will be based on the result of the court cases that are actually uh, ongoing. He went on and say, once a court decides to hear an application to discharge the conservative order issued ex parte as standalone application, then it is easy, it is not rocket science to state emphatically and authoritatively that it will indeed discharge the orders. 
he goes on and puts it very, very clearly that if for any reason the court decides only to put its focus on conservatory order and ignore other issues at the court, then that in itself signals the fact that the court is planning actually to discharge the conservatory order. Honorable Rigadi Gashagwa should not be surprised when the court discharges the conservatory order Kesho unless the court of appeal stays the high court proceedings. And he puts it plainly and blatantly that Gashago shouldn't be surprised tomorrow when now the conservator order is discharged and Kindiki is allowed uh, to be sworn in. But he goes on further and says that only the court of appeal can intervene. And if it does, for instance, if Rigadi Gashago says he's not pleased with the discharge, then that is what could be regarding Gashagwa's savior. Now, having understood or read the post from Ahmed Nasir, I think I, we, we need to try and uh, understand from which angle Ahmed Nasir is coming from and if indeed uh, it is actually valid to take into consideration what he's actually saying. But for me, I believe or I think it is actually valid uh, based on the fact that he has been a key individual uh, in the advisory department of the President of the Republic of Kenya, that is Dr. William Samuel Ruto. Now, I would like us uh, to start by saying that from Ahmed Nasir tweet, it is clear that the institution of the court eh, is actually portraying some unusual or strange behavior. Okay? It is not behaving normally. So if the court system and processes are not behaving normally, then we expect an abnormal behavior. And the abnormal behavior would be the court actually lifting the conservatory order while the issues that were actually the cause of this conservative order are yet to be lifted, okay? Because it does not make a lot of sense for the court to lift the conservative order and allow the swearing in of Kitore Kindiki, yet the same court is yet to determine whether Rigadi Gashago was impeached in the right way or not. What if the court finds that Rigari Gashago was not impeached in the right way. What will happen? Yet, Kitore Kindiki will have already been sworn in. Okay? So, from that you can see that the court behavior is abnormal and we also expect some kind of abnormal, uh, abnormal results. And uh, I also want to uh, state categorically that... Kenyans are keenly watching what is happening and um, the results of the judiciary will not only affect the individual in the name of Rigadi Gashagwa but even Kenyans in the general. That's why uh, there is this phrase that usually says that injustice to one person is an injustice to all. Today, one will celebrate that injustice is being done to a certain person, tomorrow, the same injustice will be done to you. And uh, this does not mean that Rigadi Gashago is innocent. Whether, uh, neither does it mean that he's actually uh, a good leader. But here, you remember here, the Socrates TV, we look at things from the bigger picture perspective. Uh, as much as you may be supporting impeachment or not supporting the impeachment of Rigadi Gashagwa, the most important thing that should actually be done is due process. Like, the due process needs to be followed. Okay? And the fact that Ahmed Nasir is coming out and telling us that the court is behaving in a very abnormal way means that the due process is not really being followed. The due process is not being followed. And I 
from my perspective, I wouldn't really applaud to institutional kind of uh, dictatorship or the institutional impunity like the one that we are currently being uh, taken through uh, based on what Ahmed Nasir is saying. So if we go by the statements from Ahmed Nasir, then we expect that Rigadi Gashagwa will lose, the conservator order will be lifted, Kiture Kindiki will be sworn in, and if the Court of Appeal intervenes, let's say if the petition is filed, of course I expect Rigadi Gashagwa to file a petition, then that petition could also still be discharged because uh, it is proving that the judiciary is also part of the system. Uh, what we witnessed yesterday, for instance, the verdict that the Supreme Court gave in regard uh, to the issue of the Finance Bill 2023, it was a verdict that was not very appealing to majority of Kenyans. And it was really pro-government. And what makes one believe that the same will not happen with regard to Gashagwa's case? So it is actually a very, very uh, conflicting situation that we are facing as a country. And we all actually need to ensure that indeed uh, justice should not really uh, be done, but it should also be seen to be done as one of the lawyers put it very uh, aptly uh, during the court proceedings. You know, here at the Socrato TV, we don't side with any political uh, divide, neither are we here to massage anyone's ego, but we are here to really dissect issues and look at them uh, as they are from a bigger picture perspective so that we can actually be able to distinguish what is good and what is bad, true and lies, and in the process, actually make our audiences really get value uh, from listening uh, to us. Now, having said that, I want to really end here and request that if you have watched up, up to this particular point, I will appreciate if you will actually subscribe so that you will always get a notification anytime we release this kind of videos. And uh, if you have watched up to this point, also do not forget to like uh, so that the algorithm can share the video uh, to many people. And for those who are not aware of my name, I'm Socrato, and here is our home. Until we meet again, bye-bye.